Hi all, the much anticipated TSEC season 16 is currently underway. So this is the premier division and there's quite a few neural networks playing. Uh, Leela here is playing against Scorpio neural network version, not Scorpion, <laughs> Scorpion as I might have said in a previous video, but it's actually Scorpio neural network. Uh, so Scorpio, uh, from the documentation on the computer wiki, a computer chess wiki, is a sophisticated open source engine by Daniel Shawell, written in C++. Uh, so it's um, played, it played the 2007 ICT over the board. It is a base of Daniel's general game playing engine, Nebia, able to play chess variants, checkers, reversi, go and Amazons. So very interesting. In its own right. So Leela playing white, the book moves given, d4, we go into the Coracon and uh, we we have the uh, Botvinnik attack, Panov Botvinnik attack variation. So taking on d5 this quick c4, pressure on d5, black reacts with e6, of course this closes in the c8 bishop, knight f3, knight c6, and white actually now plays c5 so that's very interesting it looks like quite a committal decision it hems in the bishop though and potentially white hasn't committed the bishop yet so it doesn't have to go routinely to e2 or d3 but rather can consider b5 to put pressure on e5 with this knight later we have bishop e7 it does go to b5 this is all part of the book though at the moment end of book white castles bishop d7 Rook e1, a6, and Leela apparently hasn't suffered an allergic reaction to the opening book given and doesn't retreat the bishop, but in fact goes through with bishop takes c6, making actual use of bishop b5. Bishop takes c6, so not caring about giving up the bishop pair. It establishes a nice bind square on e5 here. And we have bishop f4, so Leela's kind of having an iron grip of Botvinnik, that Botvinnik would be proud of here. These dark squares, uh, potential pawn majority on the queen side. We see this three to two over here potentially. Black in the ideal world, uh, and I say ideal world because really, realistically, with the pressure on the e-file, getting through with something like f6 and e5 later is uh, strategically going to be very difficult. We have knight h5, bishop e3, knight goes back, a3, h6 rook c1 and now knight e4 this looks like quite an interesting uh, move uh, trying to justify the bishop trying to liberate the bishop a bit on c6 which is at the moment a kind of big pawn uh, so knight e5 ignoring uh, the plea to liberate the c6 bishop if knight takes e4 let's have a look i think black's fully okay it doesn't matter about technically the double pawns a weakness is only a weakness really in chess if it can be exploited and here black could reach this position where in fact white's under pressure on d4 and black's double pawns seem perfectly okay black would at least be equal here in this scenario so this is ignored we have knight e5 bishop f6 now knight e2 okay so if black dares play bishop takes e5 the d4 square could be useful we have what seems to be a nuisance move bishop h4 okay it ties down the bishop to f2 it encourages a committal pawn move like g3 Leela though is not proud uh, and doesn't want to do a weakening pawn move but actually retreats the knight to try and s uh, evict this bishop goes back we have black wanting a threefold repetition it seems now another move from Leela b3 now if g3 with pawns don't go not going backwards maybe white doesn't really benefit too much from this kind of scenario white might have a small edge technically but uh, it's yeah it's not that convincing so b3 we have bishop g5 and actually that's taken again uh, black's playing in quite a provocative manner here with these tickly bishop moves if f4 then the bishop can actually just go back to h4 this position looks to be about even. There's no real targets in Black's camp here. So we have actually uh, uh, here on the invitation for a bishop exchange, 
uh, taking, and they say sometimes to take is a mistake, because aren't you sort of helping the opponent in a lot, in a lot of cases? Well, okay, the queen comes to g5, but it is a bit of a target in its own right there. Knight g3 puts pressure on the knight, so white could be interested in taking on c6 and taking on e4. Black ignores all that by playing a5. So that's kind of intriguing here, why black's quite keen, it seems, uh, to potentially go a pawn down. If black had played, had played knight takes g3, hg this is really tricky the knight's actually much better than the bishop if black ever tries to play a move like f6 just for illustration purposes then knight takes and rook takes e6 uh, just winning a pawn but it's actually uh, a really tricky position if f rook f e8 white can build up for example like this on the e file and that's going to be winning a pawn in some cases if black's not keen to play f6 and plays a waiting game then this sorry instead of f6 say black plays a waiting game here well i can actually use this rook left on the third rank and build up quite a, a promising attack like this for example this would be a, a winning a pawn there uh, let's say rook c8 black is content con completely with a waiting game no f6 at all how would white actually crack uh through a breakthrough well, like this, the H file, for example, can be used to crush black, crashing through like this. So if black does nothing, black is kind of doomed in those scenarios uh, of 9 takes G3. So the H file can actually be really vicious on HG, in fact, as, as some of those variations we just saw showed. So A5, we have Rook E3. Uh, so there is... It seems, you know, the distinct possibility of taking on c6, taking on e4, and winning a pawn. It's not used at the moment. Rook e3, queen h4, queen d3, rook fc8. And again here, it looks as though this invitation to win a pawn is really on the board there. If black had taken on g3 here, then again, this pressure, this peace pressure, threatening queen takes h6, with that huge knight on e5 is pretty unpleasant for black as this shows for example black can end up in a real bind uh, giving a big advantage to white and here uh, if say king h7 uh, then this kind of thing again is really unpleasant for black uh, sorry um, on queen h7 that's more radical this kind of thing is just a grip which isn't going anywhere on the dark squares and white could win material like this for example so yeah I just wanted to show you the nature of the position here it is unpleasant uh, so rook fc8 so it seems mysterious it requires some explanation I believe why black seemingly is keen uh, to give up a pawn so white takes on c6 now which undermines the e4 knight uh, and basically can win a pawn now and does so so a pawn up maybe black's banking on this backward pawn on the d file being enough to sort of create a blockade on the position rook g3 rook a7 so that looks nifty enough visually to kind of maybe build pressure on d4 is there enough compensation queen f4 which threatens it seems queen takes h6 we have h5 rook e1 g6 h3 rook d7 so there's pressure on d4 but we have now rook e5 yeah this it seems really interesting if rook takes d4 things like queen h6 with ideas of rook h5 look menacing black dared not uh, take this black actually played queen f8 we have queen e4 queen g7 rook f3 rook cc7 now g3 and black's just waiting here queen h8 uh, king g2 king g7 and this looks to provide a tactical target playing king g7 uh, why if queen g7 white has the luxury of playing like this for g4 so first fixing h5 playing for g4 and then building up the pressure like this is going to break through so uh this looks desperate this king g7 and white plays a really excellent move uh, tapping into black's weaknesses here and the potential for a queenside pawn majority as well 
with one move this is a super move double x clam you could say <laughs> if you if you like those uh old chess symbols from informator anyway so a double exclamation mark move i would say five seconds pause the video what does white play here okay black's positional pawn sacrifice is questioned quite severely here with d5 uh, black played c takes which of course automatically gives white a three to one pawn majority on the queen side alternatives look bad if ed actually queen e1 is really dangerous for black with the idea of playing rookie eight and queen e5 check uh, so say queen f8 rookie eight taking on c5 check is going to be mating the black king uh, if we look at this again uh, if f6 there then just taking on f6 and mating pretty soon after so like this threatening rook takes h5 king takes queen h4 mating that sort of thing and here that's that's desperate offering the queen but this is just a forced mate just to show this on the board uh, so yeah e takes doesn't bode well rook takes even worse it leaves an unprotected piece on c7 immediately exploitable with queen e5 check and taking on c7 so basically after c takes d5 white just plays now a quiet move queen d4 <laughs> yes echoing bishop e4 has played uh, by deep blue against kasparov a quiet positional move just sitting on black's position the pawn majority is ready to go black's pawns are kind of immobilized at the moment king safety is an issue immediate threats of discovered attack on the king discovered check king goes out of the way b4 the pawns are menacing rook c8 g4 even on this side the pawns are menacing so a difficult position for black here black tries to keep things closed h4 trying to keep the king safe as safe as possible on hg for instance hg this looks extremely precarious with ideas of rook h3 and coordination so say this rook h3 why is the luxury of playing b5 <laughs> just playing on the queen side here uh, with this three to one pawn majority and can actually crush black on both sides of the board so uh, this kind of thing uh, will be just crushing if black has to play f6 because uh, eventually these pawns just crash through if if black doesn't do anything uh, this kind of tactic is uh, refusing that immediately so if black's doing nothing black's lost here this this these pawns are just going through so uh, very difficult so h4 was played g5 keeping a bind on things keeping complete control of the position yes black is without much counterplay at all uh, in fact you can see with g5 even this pawn is attacked with check but uh, white's not even interested in that rook f6 a takes a takes king g8 which does protect the pawn queen e3 queen h5 uh, if the queen didn't go to h5 hitting g5 it is possible that white might want to cash out with rook takes here rook takes here and concretely win the position if white wanted to <laughs> so uh queen h5 trying to dissuade a, a sack on e6 b5 uh here even even here the position is so overwhelmingly strong by the way that even though this doesn't seem to work very well if white ever ends up with the two pawns for a rook still technically white's doing very well there might even have the advantage so anyway b5 rook e8 and here rook takes d5 using the pin uh, rook takes b5 and a rook on the seventh meeting on f7 with the other rook queen h7 c6 this is a very dangerous pass pawn over here it's pushed black transitions to basically a lost rook and pawn ending here with queen takes g5 uh, it looks pretty bleak any any notion of using the rook is going to waste time for things like rook d8 coming up later it's going to be very difficult to do anything about that so queen takes g5 this is black's last resistance hope rook c5 here trying to get behind that pawn the tarish rule against rook d8 uh if king g7 here then just take your f7 
is going to be clear enough and this this position is really crushing uh, if king f8 again same sort of patterns there with the past c pawn is actually totally winning even this scenario just rook ed7 and that past c pawn uh, c pawn is, is absolutely winning so rook c5 two pigs on the seventh as they say two greedy rooks are sometimes called pigs on the seventh uh, rook c8 king g4 so greedy for pawns but the king is also coming to help them uh, especially after this move which lets the king go in over there king h6 this is all pretty desperate from black discovering attack on the king the king is happy to take on g5 for the moment now rook e7 uh, so basically with this now threatening rook d8 mating otherwise there the king would have taken on f7 so rook d8 now is the big threat here very difficult to parry king f8 rook h7 threatening rook h8 and rook d8 king goes back okay we have now white deciding now take this pawn rook c2 king g3 check and now king f4 check here uh, rook takes f2 the king goes to e5 rook a2 check and here uh, white is able to cash out with rook d8 check taking on c8 and black uh, resigns here yeah this is pretty hopeless in this position if black tries to get behind the pawn uh, for example there's a little trick here rook h8 well-known endgame trick so if it takes we just win that rook with the check uh, so yeah this is pretty hopeless otherwise uh, the checks will run out anyway if black starts checking so yeah pretty hopeless position there this position so black resigned there uh, so yeah this is uh, leaders uh, first decisive win there have been some draws so it's all happening now at TSEC check out the premier division that's underway with quite a few neural networks in the tournament hope you enjoyed this uh, if you did if you want to play me or other youtubers check out this bitly link to capital y small v small a five capital m capital b or the link in the description okay thanks very much